First up is interior designer turned TV presenter Colin McAllister, who used to bake cakes for friends at school. Do you know, it's a mixture of joy and terror. I want to get in there. I want to roll my sleeves up and I want to get my hands dirty. Colin, we would like you, please, to make an escallop of pork, coat it with breadcrumbs, and pan fry it within 10 minutes. Within 10 minutes. OK, let's go. I feel very much like the dishwasher in our kitchen, so you know, maybe it's time to hang up my rubber gloves and shine. We really only want one escallop of pork, Colin. And if you don't know what an escallop is? Think about a piece of meat which is bashed out quite thin. Ah! There you go. I've never done this before. You've had three minutes, Colin. Seven left. Mm. Oh, God. You've got five minutes left. Does it matter that it's shaped like a boxing glove? No. You've got uh, just under two minutes now. Under two minutes, OK. I'm just worried about how cooked that is, but not at any time. Done. Done. Colin, a shaky start for you. Yes, indeed. Uh, mixing up your terminology between escallop and medallion. Which is a problem with food, I think, puts people off. Too many names for too many things. Your heat is too high. OK. And you don't have enough oil in your pan. So you have bubbly bits where the breadcrumb is not cooked, burnt bits here. That burnt flavour means the whole thing is, is quite acrid. The pork is cooked through, which mm. is surprising. Uh, it's not the best start, Colin. What pleases me is that you didn't completely lose your nerve. Big mistake, you recovered it, and as a true showman, the show went on. I feel like this has almost been like our first date, and we're not kissing yet. Colin, thanks very much. Well, as first dates go, I've had better. As soon as I walked in that door, it was like someone had wiped my brain. <laughs> Maybe if I'd gone in too high and been too fabulous, it'd be difficult to follow. Yeah, I think you should always think positively. Former estate agent Justin Ryan's passion for cooking came from seeing his mum throw lavish dinner parties. I hope to challenge myself now. I would like to think I could be as good as a professional chef, and the one thing that I'm scared of is failure. A scallop of pork, pan fried, 10 minutes. I think I'm fairly flamboyant in the kitchen. I, I really enjoy the theatre of cookery. I just want to build my competence level to such a point that I can turn what is quite a good show into a showstopper. We've got six minutes left. Uh, I have to be completely frank, I'm not entirely sure if I'm tackling this in the right way or not. Gentlemen, it's a work in progress. <laughs> You've got two minutes, my friend. Two minutes left? Yeah. You're kidding. 30 seconds left. OK. This is a Scottish way, I don't know if I mentioned that. Breaded a scallop of pork. I don't know where to start. I watched in amazement as you see to make bowls of gruel <laughs> and bowls of porridge. Uh, <laughs> the meat's tougher than it should be because it's not bashed thin. There's no crisp on the outside mm -hmm. that should have been the breadcrumbs. But actually, it's cooked through. OK. It's cooked through. I've never seen anybody try to make 
crumb batter before. <laughs> It should be lovely and tender inside. It should be crispy on the outside. It's not. We expected something. We didn't quite get it. I have never, ever seen anything like it in my life. How could I have got it so wrong? I mean, I basically made plasticine with added breadcrumbs and tried to cover that poor piece of pork and hope for the best. hey -ho. follow a recipe but there's no personal input at all. I really do want to try and explore if there's a side to me that's a bit more kind of a bit more off the wall you know and a bit freer you know and a bit more creative. Colin tell me how many times have you made a burger before in your life? I've never. What do you think you may have that, that will help you? Do you know, a, a, a winning smile and a bit of enthusiasm. Um, I just, I want to know more about cooking, you know, genuinely. It's like a voyage of discovery. It's kind of like Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Onion Rings, that type of thing. Have you previously been scared of, of cooking? Um, yes. Yeah, I think, I think there, there is a fear factor in there. It can seem like there's too much information, you know, and I think it's one of those things that puts a lot of people off cooking. Colin, you and Justin always work together. Are you all right working on your own? <laughs> You know, it's kind of weird. It's like somebody's tied my hand behind my back, you know, because we do, we, we've lived together for 26 years and, um, and suddenly we're kind of competing against each other, you know, so it's a bit of a first, but competition is healthy. So what you're saying is Justin's been holding you back for years and you relish this opportunity to get out on your own? Absolutely, yeah. I'm going to strip off the shackles of coupledom and emerge a master chef on my own. <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> Good little crispy onion rings on the side. The sticks all running through it. It's it's a bit like a plunk. <laughs> Although your burger meat is slightly over, it's a little bit well done. I don't mind that because it's seasoned really nicely, and the outside, the char on the outside, makes such a difference to the way it tastes. They're big old onion rings. Good batter, but because they're so big, they are struggling to cook all the way through. Nothing wrong with that, mate. I agree with his lordship over here. That's a decent burger. I feel much, much happier now, and to hear such positive feedback from Greg and John is amazing. Well done. Go and have a break. You have one last test today. Off you go. I think I've just become a vegetarian. Oh my god. <laughs> Group hug. Recipes I find really, really limiting because a recipe is somebody else's idea of what makes a good meal. My taste buds and my, my vision and my mind are what I think should make a good meal. Justin, boys, what are you going to cook for us? A uh, beautiful crouton with kidneys, bacon lardons and mushrooms in a Madeira and cream sauce with a little um, dressing around the edge and some pine nuts to, to finish off. Your round, this one? I really hope it's my round because I, I, I do want to be creative and I want to think out of the box. Um, I've never cooked with kidneys before, guys, so I'm a little nervous. You are quite nervous about this, Justin. Is it because you're competitive or are you concerned about the experience that you've got? It's a combination of all of those things, but who'd be lying if they said they didn't want to win? Or, or at least progress. So I'm giving it my absolute best shot. Good luck. Thank you very much. Justin, I think it's really impressive. Trying the kidneys first, trying the dish out, thinking about how the whole thing comes together. It's nice to see Justin having a plan in his head. My worry for Justin is he's got far too much going on that plate. He's got a sauce, and then he's got some sort of mayonnaise, and he's got some nuts. Let's see. <laughs> I've never ever invented a dish from scratch before, and I think it could be a lack of fear because I'm not um, I'm not held down by rules, you know. And I think there are there, obviously there are rules in the kitchen. Do you know what they are? <laughs> Colin, you have a real serious look upon your face. Um, 
do you know what? I quite like the whole kind of invention idea, you know, and I'm thinking um, that I don't have anything to lose. If it was something that I had a preconceived idea about how it tasted, then I might be thinking there's a challenge there. But I actually have no idea how kidneys taste, so I don't have a fear there. So for some weird reason, I've decided just to go on a gut instinct. And my first thought was, well, if you said to me you, you're going to eat kidneys, I would say, well, you need to buy me a drink first. So I thought, well, I'll add the alcohol to the kidneys and maybe do the kidneys in a kind of Madeira cream kind of sauce thing. I like the idea of your kidneys and the flavours you've got with them. Your task now is to decide how you're going to serve those to make them a plate of food. Sure. OK, right, no, fair enough. You've never cooked kidney? No. Well, how are you going to know when it's cooked? Uh, good question. I'm going to have to try, obviously. Your instinct is good. Go with it. OK, right, I'm... Mm, mm, OK, well, yes. No. <laughs> I love it. Cole is scared of those kidneys, doesn't want to eat them, actually frightens him a little bit, and that may show in his finished dish. If he can actually taste the kidney and enjoy it, he will end up with something delicious. Pressure's on. Two minutes left. Last 60 seconds. Stop. Time is well and truly up. First up, Colin has cooked kidneys in a Madeira, shallot and garlic cream sauce with a flat mushroom served on toast. That's pretty good. Listen, everybody likes their kidneys different like they like their steak. As long as you get a little bit of pink still in there, I'm happy. OK. Kidneys cook really well. The toast is a really good idea because it soaks up all of that sauce. The sauce is sweet, but it needs something else. It needs a good cracker pepper, or it needs something sharp to take it from good to great. Carl, I'm impressed. I'm impressed because you've got soft shallots, your kidneys are cooked really well. That sauce is lovely and thick and clings to every single part of your kidneys. For me, it's a big spoonful of spicy mustard off being brilliant. But, considering you had little idea what you were doing at the start, you'd never cooked kidneys before, I'm impressed with the deafness of touch. <laughs> well, look at this face. <laughs> relaxed face, like, oh, whew, heavy sigh of relief face. Actually, I'm really into it, you know, I want to learn more. I'm quite in, I want to soak it all up like a sponge. <laughs> Designer Justin has made kidneys in a Madeira and bacon cream sauce on a garlic and paprika crouton with a flat mushroom topped with spinach and pine nuts and a mustard emulsion. It's a good looking modern plate of food. And because it looks like that, I have a really high expectation of what your kidneys are going to be like. Your kidneys are a little bit overcooked, so they're becoming a bit bouncy. But that sauce with that rich bit of mushroom and the wonderful crispy crouton underneath, with the spiciness of that mustard dressing around the outside, is really really tasty. Oh, thank you. Salty bits of bacon, real strength of that kidney. Garlic on a crouton was a lovely idea. And that Madeira sauce is strong. I really like that. OK. I really like that. I honestly feel like a massive weight has been lifted off me. I felt I let myself down chronically on the first test. I've built it back through and I really feel so proud of that. The pressure is going to continue to mount up and what we do with them next is seriously tough.